welcome to John Boy and Jake Radio. It's August 18th, episode number 309, and we are kicking it off in a very exciting way. A special guest, Nicole. You've seen her on Take Me Out and Baggage, and maybe we haven't seen you on Parental Control. Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> but, but maybe our audience has. Uh, my name's Jimmy. Jake is here as well. BBD in the corner. Brought to you by DraftKings. If you go to DraftKings and you uh, want to bet on the Pacquiao Ugas fight, huge. You can choose one fighter uh, to win, and if any fighter lands a punch, your one dollar will turn into one hundred dollars in free credits, and you can bet on those for the rest of the baseball season. And the Yankees will never stop losing, so you can just do that. Uh, so download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code JOHNBOY when you sign up to turn $1 into $100 in free credits when you bet on a fighter to win and a punch is landed during the fight. Place your bet and watch the fist fly this weekend. That's code JOHNBOY to turn $1 into $100 in free credits only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or PA only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER in Indiana, 1-800-9 with it. All right. Nicole, thank you very much for joining us today thank you for having me this show and this uh audience is is the same youtube channel that we used that we used to watch baggage on and then we did the full season of take me out uh and you were one of the only contestants on both so when you reached out a couple weeks ago i think our reactions uh were in the (laughs) behind the scenes vlog and it was like yes i want to we need to chat need need to no hesitation had yeah so I don't know where to start. I guess you're coming to us from LA. How's how are you doing? How's life? Life is awesome, despite what's going on. Um, I've lived in Los Angeles for 15 years now. God. Wow. Okay, so it's been like 10 years since Take Me Out. Which is wow. <laughs> I mean, that's me. like nuts. I, um, uh... Every day for me is the take me out resort uh, in my head, oh, at least. God. How um? So let's let's go back even further because okay, I I mentioned our baggage saga. You are genuinely talking to two of the biggest baggage fans in the world. We we used to just like when it was on late night, we would text each other, and then this whole thing has turned into like a company and stuff. So baggage was such a big thing. We loved it, and then they reached out and they didn't love what we were doing with it so much. But one day down the line. Uh, we'll do more with it, but tell us the whole thing. Cause it sounds like you got, you were in the whole cycle. You're, you're still out in LA. Were you just signing up for any and every show that you could at the time or how, how did the whole path go for you? Yeah. So I originally, I'm from Maryland, um, East coast. I, you guys are in New York, yeah. right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, I went to college for theater and dance, and then I uh, went on a couple different children's theater tours, and then I moved out here in 2008, um, and I've been out here ever since. So my my main focus is acting. Um, I do mainly TV, but a lot of voiceover as well. Uh, when I first moved out here, I was gold for reality shows. <laughs> um I'm really blunt, East Coast. And when they would call me in, you know, they were calling in pretty much anybody. This is before I was in the union, (laughs) so I could (laughs) do these things. Um, And then the first show I did was Parental Control. And um, that, that actually is pretty crazy, that episode. At one point, they have me pretend like I'm skinny dipping. So I take my top off while running into the ocean. So you guys should definitely try to find that episode. Um, (laughs) From that, they knew I was down for whatever. So um, (laughs) all the, honestly, the producers and the casting directors kept calling me in for every reality show. Um, One thing you guys got wrong about me is that I don't, I don't work in a bowling alley. I'm a professional bowler. Like Our bad. legit, like I think that was the comment section because one of your maybe. baggages was you have a beer can, beer tap <laughs> collection. Now and listen, I think... that's separate and that's true. <laughs> okay. that's so, so one of our, I think in the comments, someone said, "Well, it makes sense that she collects beer cans because yeah. she works at a bowling alley and there's oh, a bar okay. there." So that's maybe just muddled. So professional bowler. We try to connect too many dots. That's our bad. Or someone was trying to make sense of my 
hand tab <laughs> collection, um, which is which is all right. But no, I'm a professional bowler, so that is true. I mean, when you go into those reality show auditions, you can't say you're an actor or voiceover or whatever. So I would say professional bowler because I was literally bowling in tournaments and whatnot. Ninth in ninth in uh, the state in of Maryland. Maryland. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I first came out here, I was really avidly bowling as well. So it was true, you know, but really I was going on because I was an actor. But um, I would also tell them like just crazy shit. Like I smoked cigars because at the time I, I did like avidly <laughs> smoke. I smoked <laughs> It's good to get I into should... hobbies. It's good to have <laughs> hobbies. <laughs> Only for a reality show. On yeah. um, and then just like, I would just tell them whatever they wanted to hear. And so they were like, yep, let's bring her on. And so baggage was the second thing that I did. Okay. Um, and from that, I wound up doing an MTV pilot that did not get picked up, but it was a reality show pilot based on, god based off of it's called excess all areas and it was based on somebody that has an addiction to something Mm. and um they pulled me in they couldn't find anybody that they wanted for the pilot the pilot was scripted um and then they were like we've been seeing people forever and we're just we want to go with you and that was really cool they flew my mom out to la twice all my friends were in it and the addiction was alcohol um do you have the tape from that do you have the tape of yourself being addicted to alcohol (laughs) i don't damn i i know i let it slip through my fingers because uh they just didn't pick it up they called me in to paramount to watch it i saw it pretty legit but like if (laughs) if they had picked up the show and used someone that actually had an addiction they could not have done it in a half hour, which is what they were trying to do. Because mm. I had to show up with a doctor. I had to, like, get my mom involved, all my friends, because they wanted the real. So that's why they didn't pick it up in the end. And then from that, I got on Take Me Out. And I was the last girl to be chosen as one of the top 30. Right. And I this was, like, the day before. And everything was very fast-tracked for me for, for Take Me Out. Um, and then I think that was the end of my reality journey circuit. Let's, let's start with baggage. Cause that's my favorite. Um, we actually talked to yeah. like the producer of baggage when we were trying to, <clears throat> I think he's the head of game show network now. He's a really cool guy, but, uh, because the biggest question was how real is it? How not real is it? And when we finally talked to him, he was like, well, you know, we interview, he told us that we interviewed these people. And we ask them tons of questions about their life. And then we just take a snippet and turn it into a, their baggage. Because sometimes the contestants seem genuinely surprised by what was being said about them. And then they'd be like, what? No. Uh, and like deny it. Is that how it went? Did you, Or did you give them three pieces of baggage? I, I did, that is kind of how he said it is kind of how it went. But the thing is, they would take one small thing and then they would say, "Okay, we're going to heighten this. So so my third piece of baggage was I led an angry mob to attack my boyfriend, my ex. Yes. They definitely turned some dumb story that I had into like a bigger thing because that was my biggest baggage. Mm. I'm actually I'm actually remembering this now. I <laughs> forgot about that. Um, so I would just, you know, go with it. And then for the tabs, they had my dad send the picture of the tabs all over his basement, but he spread them out. So it looked like I was hoarding these things and that they were taking over a room in my house, which mm. was not the case. Um, and then the other one was a flushing the toilet. <laughs> mm. That that one's real. <laughs> that's, that's just living. <laughs> yeah, that's just that's just being disgusting. <laughs> um, but but honestly, when you got there into hair and makeup, because this was filmed in one day, um, they told you the baggage there. That's probably okay. why some of the girls were were surprised. But you did know what was in your suitcase. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. 
So. What about what about when uh, you? <laughs> this is so in the weeds of the show baggage. So I know it was just like one day in your life, but <laughs> <laughs> no, the, I mean I'll talk about any. The other. moment when uh, the, after the second round they make you do the do si do to like fake the contestant out. I forget your episode, but wow. did you guys do like that a good? In the did you guys do a good <laughs> fake out there? It's my favorite part. We didn't. We didn't do a fake out. Oh, but I know wow. what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. Um, there was a girl on my episode that, at the time, honestly, she could barely understand English. She was like Romanian and, or something, right? R- Russian. Yeah, and Russian. I, rem- I remember they were having a really hard time with her um, because she was refusing all of the things that they were saying to her about her baggage. Cause when we get there, they're there, they might have maybe four things and then they pick three. So you can like say, Oh no, I want this one. Mm. And she did not want any of her baggage and she couldn't understand what was going on. And I was like, Oh my God, this is going to be, this is going to be crazy. Um, I was like, I'm winning a date today. Um, (laughs) So, yeah, we didn't do the do si do, I think, maybe because of that situation. Too confusing. But, I like that. Was Jerry yeah. the best? Mm. So nice. Um, I got along with him really well, <laughs> as I also got along with George Lopez really well. Um, but Jerry was just, I mean, he's just awesome. He's not, like, you know how he has his Jerry Springer show, or did, you know, yeah. where it was pretty nuts. Um, he was he was just cool, cool guy, funny. When when you're going on baggage, and you know, obviously you know you're jumping into the deep end of something. I mean, what what are your genuine priorities at the time? Are you like, are you looking to get semi-viral? Are you looking to put on a good show? Are you like, I can't, I mean, I low key want to win. I've got that, you know, pro bowler. You're trying to get the win. I know you. Um, what what's your mindset when you're jumping into like baggage onset that day? Get me on TV. Yeah, that's my thought. That was my thought. Um, it still is, but we couldn't go viral because there was no right. viral at the time. So it's not like I could promote it on Instagram, and then of course I did on Facebook. But like, um, yeah, that was my thought was get me on there i'll do anything you guys want i'll say anything you want what were what were the i mean obviously some similar vibes would take me out we we were trying to theorize some stuff because we knew you know when we looked that up there were the eight episodes so we knew you know when we were coming up against it did did you guys know that that was going to be towards the end of the line because i think that last episode I think, like, more people were in than normal. Like, everyone was trying to get to the final round that it looked like people (laughs) knew the show might be on the way out. Was that happening at all? 100%. Um, So when we signed on, we knew it was going to be eight episodes. And um, it was a freaking bloodbath, man. I mean, like, behind the scenes of Take Me Out, was very very intense Mm. um first of all we weren't allowed to leave the hotel we weren't allowed to talk to anybody so it was kind of like being on like the mass singer or something where you just can't tell anyone you're on the show you're in this hotel which i loved they were paying for our (laughs) hotel stay i was like heck yeah i won't talk to anybody um and we were filming the episodes almost every day so we were there for like two weeks straight and um most of the girls on the show were very very fake everyone actors Mm. right same deal with being on baggage or whatever Mm -hmm. you're you're trying to get on tv and the problem is that most of them were models and none really we're having anything they wanted us to have the catchphrases i know you guys were like oh yeah majorly majorly getting on me in particular for throwing out the zingers or the the but yours weren't as bad it was it was um the woman who came dressed like rosie the riveter i forget her name um and then the other one with the i I mean i'm 
going to describe like physical appearances, and it, I don't want to go down for, that. But I know exactly the blo- what you're talking about. The blonde one that was right at the end. For us, it was it was just such a clear contrast of what works now and what they thought worked then. Is like let's hit him with the zinger, let's hit him with the one liner. Where especially in the world we live in now, it's about being natural and being like true to yourself, right. which. Yeah. You know, but you, but you could spin that, and a lot of them could not. And even George had a tough ask. I mean, yeah. George, George's his, lines were ridiculous. His lines were brutal. They were, but, I mean, there's one point in episode one that he says, like, let the cheese see the crackers, and they cut to me, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, like, half the time, if you guys, like... Okay, so Janae was my best friend on the show. She was the girl staying next to me. Yeah. Had all the fa- all the fashion, which she actually does do music and fashion, and she got to pick all of her. We we kind of picked all of our outfits. I mean, they gave us some and we brought some, but she um, definitely was just so down to earth and cool. And I know you guys liked her on the show. Yeah. She just was was a rock star. Um, but. I actually, during the show, a million times, you'd see me and Janae going, the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they they cut to us, and we're just like, oh, my God. Like, some of the guys that they would bring out, which, mm. you know, looking, ba- looking back, probably wasn't a <laughs> good thing to do while I was on the show, but... Um, they should have brought out some, like, actual guys. <laughs> like, I think <laughs> it would have been more successful if the guys were, like, Dateable guys. They basically did because like a baggage route with a bunch of uh, like yeah. thirty girls, and then like like the one dude who came out and started like stripping, and he was like five foot one. Like he was it was like, well, come on, gotta have some real contenders here. But again, this is people that want to be on TV, and yeah. you know, actors that are doing God knows what at the time and all the people on there like some girls were like i knew that guy just because he was like auditioning and stuff and they Mm. would see him you know um but back to like the cutthroat bloodbath stuff um so being on take me out was a game in itself for us you didn't want to go out on the first episode because right. you're getting paid per you're getting paid per episode and you want to be on TV. So you got to play it right. And wow. I did I did because I got the le- very last date. They actually were <laughs> going to have another guy on and they were like no this connection's good. Let's end the show here. So I pushed it right to the end. You had to keep your buzzer on at certain times. You had to have a phrase for what you wanted to say if George mm. came to you. And then the phrase had to be good, and the producers were feeding some girls lines. And I probably shouldn't say this, but sometimes the girls' buzzers were on or off, depending on wow. what the show wanted. Um, so that became that became really intense um, because the girls were flipping out, and the producers were calling them over. I would see it; they would call them over, and they'd be like. If you don't say something funny, you're gone. Um, mm. But but they're picking these thirty girls to be on the show. People are going to notice if they're gone, so they right. had to like either put them out or you know give them. They were feeding mainly everybody lines. They never fed me a line, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I was also cast as the tomboy of the show. So with the comments that I made, was more like. Well, I don't know if you guys heard the comment when I was like, come on, doesn't everyone cheat? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Little did I know George Lopez had just had something come out in the news Mm. that day. (laughs) And everyone was like, did you do that on purpose? And I'm like, oh, my God, no. (laughs) Oh, my God. But he was cool. He didn't do anything weird. But um, (laughs) like I was just I was pretty blunt, honestly, still in my comments. Um, But they had to be very like concise in a way of like yeah um what did i say Some one point shit, you like, liked uh, his accent i remember i didn't i mm. didn't like accents in the first episode. yes you did not like he accents. was italian and i was the only one with my light off yes. and you can even see me go like this oh shit mm-hmm. yes <laughs> because, i think yeah. i apologize but i think my reaction was like well you feel like a bitch now nicole <laughs> like, yeah. the only <laughs> one off yeah you did say that but honestly it <laughs> It did look like that, and you know what? 
I don't regret it because it brings, what are they wanting us to do? No, it's they want to provide entertainment. The reason why you guys are commentating on it and making comments is because you're entertained or like, what the hell? Like that was my right. whole goal was to like, make sure that I was providing some sort of entertainment for people because I didn't care either way on the dates, but I was very honest about the guys that I liked, what I liked about the guys. And the last guy that I got with George, he's a phenomenal person. I still talk to him. When wow. he came out, I really, really, really liked him when he came out. I loved everything he was doing. Um, and our connection was genuine. Like he actually, he 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 told me later, he was like, yeah, I, I already knew that I was going to pick you before we even got into like the, the second round. True love. Um, so did, well, how was, we, uh, did you guys get to go on a date? Yeah, because there was no like. We did. We did. They did show it. Oh, they, they did? They showed it at the very end of the last episode. Instead of the last guy to be on, they showed our date. Mm. And people, are, people were saying, is Nicole drunk? And I was. <laughs> I was <laughs> Damn it, Nicole. We, we have people that always say, are you guys drunk or high? And we're, I'd say, 80 per, 90% clip we're not. And I was just gonna say like, no, you weren't, and then you dropped <laughs> you dropped that. So that that well, won't okay, help us. Here's here's how the date went. It was at the resort. No, there really wasn't a single resort. Looked like beautiful. I think Jim Jim had said there well, there wasn't really a resort. Just it a bunch was of like wineries. wherever they wanted the date to go. So we went to um, uh, Morongo, and they did pay for our stay, but the date portion was like, all right, you guys are going to a comedy club. Go in there, sit down, we're going to roll, come back out. So it was like, we didn't actually get to enjoy the whole thing. And then it was right. like, okay, you guys are coming out to the patio, we're having a dinner. So we'd go out to the dinner. But every single time they were letting us still drink. <laughs> so I was running the thing to thing and I was just like, oh, this is fun. Yeah, and by the, la by, the, by the last interview, I was like, I love him. <laughs> Um, Forever. Um, the Greek couple. Yeah. I don't know if you watched every one of our watching, but there was one. I tried to. There was one couple uh, that was like the second or third episode that we are pretty dead set that they are mm. found true love and started a family together. <laughs> so if you could confirm that, even if you have to lie to us, they were like two short, very Greek. He he wrote like children's books, uh, and we I were. I think I know who you're talking about. Um, some of the girls did really like the guys. Um, and I'm not sure how many people actually really wanted to find love, but <laughs> they did. They're married. They're so um, happy. It's a great family situation. I don't know about those two per se, but it's very possible. Like it's, it's true then. That yeah, sounds like a yes believe. to me. That's great. Uh, I do. I do keep in contact with a lot of the girls because after the show, we had red carpet premieres. We mm. had um, screenings at different clubs. And we we all, surprisingly, got along at the, at the, we weren't getting, hardly anyone got along on the show because mm. it was cutthroat. It was like, who's gonna be here for the long haul? Who's funny? Who's getting pulled right. out? Who's, you know what I mean? So it was just, really intense but then afterwards it was like for instance mindy mm -hmm. everyone could not stand her on the show no, i wonder her why real, her real personality is like that mm. she was laying it on thick she was laying it on thick obviously but then at the party it was she was normal mm. i mean she still had that kind of energy but sure. like she was cool like i got along with her and there was a lot of girls on the show that i was just like oh my god i want to kill that person <laughs> But then later at the premiere, it was like, wow, we all did this cool thing. So um, I do still keep in contact with Janae, with George. Um, there's a girl, Kelly, that was standing next to me. And then also Aaron. And Aaron is a very successful comedian. Um, Aaron Darling. She was, I think, right next to me. Um, so those girls I still keep in contact with. And they're all pretty successful now. So That's awesome. Um, do you, uh, cause I mean those, do you, when you look back at like that run of what you were doing, do you wish 
you went even more deep end with it? I mean, is it it just was what it was at the time, and and you enjoy it now? Is it what what are like? You know, it, this doesn't have to be a reveal all <laughs> all feelings, but like where where do you sit with it at, at like now? Um. Well, I'm so much farther along in my you know acting career now that looking back i'm like can this come back to haunt me (laughs) um which it kind of did with you guys but no (laughs) i i watched i watched well okay so i for some reason was looking up take me out um because there is one thing that you guys don't know but i fell down the stairs Ooh. very first opening shot first episode and took out like two girls awesome (laughs) It was rough. I mean, we were walking down very slippery stairs. The stairs were made out of that fake plastic that had light had the lights underneath, mm. like all game show sets are made out of. No railing. You're holding hands with the other girl, Jeez. and your heels are this yeah. tall. I don't. I'm not good in heels in general. And I was like, somebody's going down these stairs. I literally <laughs> said it right before that, and then I slipped and I fell. But they cut it. So at like three, at like um, the three minute mark on episode one, you can see me laughing as I'm walking from the stairs because they had to cut away and then come back and you can see. Uh, One of the girls fell down the stairs and she broke her ankle and she was off the show. And I can't remember who that, I can't remember who that was, but I don't know if you guys picked up on that. I guess maybe you didn't, but uh, yeah, she had to get carried out on a stretcher. What? Anyway, so I was Googling that. <laughs> what? <laughs> Guys, drop I'm telling a, you, drop the, show, a bomb the, show on was, the show was deadly. Um, but I was Googling that and I found your guys' thing. And it was my episode, episode eight. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> what is? The, I, what are these assholes doing? I watched it and I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. And I started looking at all the comments. People were saying, we hate Nicole as a collective. (laughs) I'm like, Oh my God. And then like, (laughs) when you said, um, just want to remind everybody that (laughs) she works in a bowling alley. And you, you guys were laughing like for like five minutes. No, but that was, but that was, we were laughing because Jake was laughing about the love lift killing the guy. I, uh, yeah. yeah. I I was laughing with you guys. Trust me. I was cracking up with you guys. It is ridiculous. I forget if we were just, I was burnt out. I I don't know if it was work or life or both, but yeah, that final episode of Take Me Out, like just that, the eyes kind of go glossy and your mind is fried. And I just had such a vivid image of like, Last episode, everyone was kind of pulling out of the show, and the love yeah. lift just went wonky and just tossed him around. And I was <laughs> I was in a bad, I was just mentally shot for about a minute and a half. So, I mean, that is hilarious when when uh when you're like he just chooses to go back up in the elevator. I mean, you guys, your commentary is is hilarious, like of everything. Thank you. And if you ever said anything not the best about me i don't care because i was on there for you guys to do that well, and this is why i wanted to come on the show because i think one you guys are hilarious two i wanted to let you in on a couple of the secrets yeah, of the show. thank you i mean a girl falling I down mean, the steps and a stretcher coming that's, that's, cool. that's, that's <laughs> they gotta run that next yeah. time <laughs> Actually, you can find the footage of a girl on the british version of the show if you google um or youtube take me out girl falls downstairs or something like that they will show you the girl that fell down the stairs on the british version of the show and it's exactly how we fell down the stairs <laughs> That's, it's man. pretty ridiculous they didn't, they didn't care they were just like you're wearing these heels and you're walking down these stairs so you you found the videos probably after all the baggage episodes got taken down because we had Ooh. Maybe yeah, 40. I couldn't find those. We had like 40 uh, where we re- we did the same thing, just commented. And I, like, it's perfect for baggage because 
the 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 things that are being said there, like it's made to be ripped apart because it's like what? Yeah. Like one dude's right. like I sleep in a coffin. It's like what? <laughs> right. Um yeah. so we're trying I just put another feeler out to see if back if uh Game Show Network will allow us to do it again. Because we have all three hundreds of baggage. <laughs> ready to go. Ready oh to God. watch and record. I was wondering where that was. I was like, well, if somebody pointed out that I was on baggage, how, where's that? I was trying to find your episodes. but We, still, we have it, just not, so it's not public. So yeah. if you wanted to And then see I it. saw on your Instagram, I saw a clip of when, <laughs> <laughs> when you guys said I was a vaudeville character. <laughs> a vaudeville? Yeah. A vaudeville, yeah. Guys. I am that's, like it's. I am like that's how I talk. I talk out of the side of my mouth all the time. So cool. I, it's like pretty pretty spot on. I kind of live in the same world. I uh, <laughs> as just ridiculous and uh, start tap dancing right now. Do you like right? that? Yeah. Oh, put yeah. a little money yeah. in the hat here. Yeah? So no, that's from yeah. from me. That's an ultimate compliment. Um, but no, I yeah. mean we um. Yeah, I, I know, because <laughs> right before we hopped on, I told you how how <laughs> we like we had a baggage ordeal. Yeah. It was a thing, and there will be baggage content in our future. We just don't know how. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it might have be. to be like a live showing where we invite people to come sit watch. During parental control episodes, because they are ridiculous. I mean, that's, we did, that's the most ridiculous thing. We did some MTV ones. Unfortunately, like if it's not on... It's not already on YouTube on some crappy third party channel. Yeah. We can't do yeah. it. Like, so like a lot of the old yeah. MTV ones are on MTV or like even Nickelodeon. We were watching Guts and Legends of the Hidden Temple and that was but then Nickelodeon came calling, so bummer. But yeah. uh I think the yeah. hardest like uh, that episode for you to watch that last episode of Take Me Out First, I believe that's the hardest Jake has ever <laughs> laughed in the last yeah. three years. Uh, he like didn't breathe for two gassed. minutes, just thinking about the guy getting in the elevator and th- and then it opening up and him just laying there. Just one of those memes about like your your last brain cell and what it's doing in there. Like that's where I was, and it was a beautiful moment for me. I uh, mean, I was I was laughing the whole time you guys were laughing because it is ridiculous. I mean, that was the whole point of the show was to entertain, and it was ridiculous. Do you think those shows could do well today? Do you think they'd have to go? more off the deep end do you think that would play like better on on youtube type stuff we're doing or like back on the main networks just with like like you were saying like social media now if they did a take me out they could probably get you know 30 people with a 100k to instagram followers and they can fight everyone behind the set and stuff but i don't know no that's what's like going wrong with like mtv the challenge and big brother big brother actually just switched to not do influencers anymore because they're just like so caught up in being who they want to be that they're not just themselves. Like for you, Nicole, you said that, you know, you were just doing it to money and be on TV and stuff, but compared to some of the other girls on take me out, you were very real. I mean, I thought I was yeah. <laughs> until I heard <laughs> people's comments on your thing, but <laughs> Um, no comments to, lie. Comments lie. To answer to answer Jake's question, it wouldn't work because, whew, you guys heard some of the things we were saying. It would not fly today. Yeah. Um, we were just being very innocent and making like little phrases that were supposed to be funny or whatever. But now half the stuff that everyone said on there, like that's why I was scared. I was like, do I want to watch another episode? Because, <laughs> uh. I mean, at one point, I think you guys said, is that racist? Oh, well, you said that a couple times, but I mean, now it wouldn't fly. Like, well, I think, I think you said, like, wouldn't. I love Puerto Ricans or something like that. Okay. He, I was like, well, first of all, I love Latinos. Yeah. So, that's, yeah. I sorry, think it's fair. That, yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's. Um, but he, he said, I'm from the Dominican Republic. And I was like, excuse me, where are you from again? So ridiculous. <laughs> and then he was like, Dominican Republic. And I'm like, check done. <laughs> um, and then George said, Oh, you like Latinos? And I was like, Yeah, because they hadn't brought any out. Yeah. Because I was waiting. I kept telling the girls, and all the girls knew that I liked Latinos. And um, mainly just, well, 
is it bad if I say I like Asians? Because I do. No, that's fine. Um, so then they finally brought out George, and all the girls knew that I would want him. Like, they knew this about me. Oh, it's kind of like parting the sea. Like, yeah. don't get in Nicole's way here. Yes, that's why everyone was blocking my button, because they knew I was waiting mm. for somebody like that. They kept bringing out these, oh, my God, just idiot. <laughs> It wasn't this, a good pro- crop. At one point, it was like this is. It was like they did the first round of American Idol, but never the final. Like never the good auditions. It just meant like gag, gag guy, gag guy, gag guy. And I bet you they did have a hard time finding guys. I mean, would you guys want to be going on there no. and being putting out your baggage to everybody? You gotta be pretty shameless. All these girls. So it's like if you're a normal guy, you're probably not going on there. But George was a comedian mm. and a rapper and a comedian rapper pretty much and a skateboarder and so he was like what do i have to lose let's go in here and then he was the last guy to bring out they saved the best for last and um i was like well it's my time to get on a date because the last episode it's time to know, go of course that was everyone's thought process yes you guys were right about that you caught on to a lot of the stuff that was going on when you were like it looks like that girl's surprised that her light's on. Yeah. I think said that once. There was a couple of those. And I was like, those. dang, how did they? But Yeah, we got the eye for it. We got to try a British one, I guess, if we go back to doing Take Me Out. We'll try yeah, and I, I think you're good. We Because uh, we, we've gone through different phases of trying and watching different things. And uh, I think, you know, because those were, what, 2011, 2013, whenever it was. But, the uh, you know, we watched some old MTV stuff. Some of the old, oh like, MTV God. dating shows from the 90s. And, and a guy will be like, yeah, yeah, you know, I only hook up with a chick if she's fucking drunk. And you're like, hey. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. Ah. Yeah. One of the episodes of Next, <clears throat> the dude just uh, took his dick out and, and chased the girls naked, like, on the show. And it was, pro- like you're saying, it was probably. Probably a little fake, but still, even the idea of that being fake and cool almost <laughs> makes it worse. Yeah. Um, yeah. That one's still up. You can Making watch it's worse. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're ever in the East Coast bowling, I want, we'll, we'll, <clears throat> we'll bowl together. I'm not a pro. My top score is 215. I keep it. That's I keep great. a picture of it on my phone. Only open frame was the 10th. It was very sad. Oh, yeah. yeah. Brutal. Yeah. At least you had that string of strikes. Yes. Is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have the scorecard. It's from <laughs> like 2005. No. It's just, you know. <laughs> You're like, no. wait, let me check. <laughs> junior year of high school, I, I moved to California, and their PE and kind of general public schooling system is terrible. I took bowling three times in high school, twice mm-hmm. as a senior and once as a junior. So I got pretty good. Yeah. Jake's- what was your average coming out of that? Well, my top score was 215, and that's the only stat I remember. <laughs> yes, but yes, but what is Jeez, the average? Well, because... no one really is quite sure. You know? <laughs> How do you even get an average, you know? Here we go. I went, yeah, you have to bowl more than three times, I guess. <laughs> I went nine spare, strike, mm. nine spare, strike, two, picked up the spare, got all eight, then a turkey, then seven, closed it, nine, closed it, then nine on the last frame. Could have had a 216. You didn't close out the last screen? No. Mm. No. Yeah, that was the problem. You. Yeah. <laughs> In the game before that, I got a 117. Mm. So, a 117? Yeah, that was the two games wow. that day. <clears throat> November 15th, 2006. So, so, yeah, I'm up for it. Whenever you're in town, we'll go bowl. No, seriously. <clears throat> Do you still I bowl competitively? A while. Oh, no? Um. Because of the pandemic, I stopped. Mm. But I was in three leagues a week, which was a lot. Yeah. Mm. Um, and bowling in tournaments at least <clears throat> once a month. Um, and I had a coach, one of the best coaches, at least in the U.S., um, very expensive. And I realized that this is a whole other career that I would have had to do and I wouldn't be able to act. You'd have to be in the bowling alley every day. So I kind of like fell off of bowling right before the pandemic and then the pandemic hit and then it was like, well, I can't go bowling anymore. But I would love to go back. I have all my own equipment. Mm. I still audition for things as a bowler. Okay. Um, You're in Superstore for, for commercials. with something bowling, right? Yeah, that was the one of the best days of my life, actually. Um, it was, they called the bowling alley. 
I was there. Everyone knows me there. Pins in Studio City for anybody that knows Los Angeles. Um, and they were like, yeah, we have somebody. And they called me and I was at the bowling alley when I talked to them and they were like, Hey, can you do trick shots? Do you feel confident in that? I was like, yup. <laughs> they were like, no you're an actor, you're in SAG. I'm like, yup. They were like, can you send a picture? Okay. Um, <clears throat> next day I was on set. They had a bowling ball made for me mm. <sighs> because I told them, I told them, I cannot make this shot with, with your guys' prop. It was just, you know, Need I have a hooking thing. ball. So, yeah. So they took me to the bowling alley that day while they were filming. And they had a bowling ball made for me. They let me keep it. Um, when I came back, they were like, just so you know, the director wants a, a guy for this. Wants a little, uh, like a 13-year-old boy, like mm -hmm. Dennis the Menace. You know, <laughs> like a dumb kid comes sure. along and just throws a bowling ball, right? And I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> and they were like, but, but, and they're like, but you're the professional. I'm like, yes. And I was like, trust me, if you knew my personality, you'd, you'd say that I'm that little Dennis the Menace. <laughs> Can be that. And so I was really nervous because they were like, just so you know, we have three 13 year old boys that don't know how to bowl ready to do it if you don't make the shot. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, I'm wearing Ugg boots, sweaters, and if you know anything about bowling, you don't want all that clothing on you. That's not good. And I'm wearing gloves mm. and hats. And well, I don't think I was wearing a hat, but I was wearing a scarf because it was the Midwest. And they were like, okay, so the whole Super Sore stage, that whole store is very large. It's like a huge warehouse, right? Because they film everything in there. So they have all different spots. So it's pretty far. And they were like, you're going to hit that s display of suntan lotion. And I'm looking down there and I'm like, all right, I can do this. I can do this. They're like, oh, just, just so you know, the floor slants here. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Perfect. And they're like, all right, get some, get some gloves on her. And I'm like, okay. And I'm just like, shit. And um, everybody kept coming up to me, hair, makeup. They were like, there, how are you going to do this? And I was like, I got to do it. Got to hit and it. And they were like, I remember hearing the director go, well, we wanted the boy, but the girl's professional, apparently. <laughs> oh. that's, the, that's the first time I ever experienced anything like that, being, I guess, female and having somebody say, no, a male needs to do it. That was weird. Yeah. So I was like, I got to make this shot. They were like, all right, let's give you a practice shot, right? They have the crane above me. I'm used to being on set, but, you know, this was a pretty crazy shot. Everyone, they were just like, good luck, you know. There were background people crossing the aisle. I just lost this. Um, background people crossing the aisle. So I had to throw the ball and they had to, like, dodge it. I throw the first practice and they rolled on it. I missed it by this much. Mm. Am I there? Yep. Yeah. Okay, because it's frozen on my computer. And I was like, all right, I just got to adjust. I just got to move to the left. They were like, all right, let's roll. I threw it. It was perfect. It's the shot that you saw if you saw the clip. I got to go and, watch this. Um, I haven't seen it. Everyone was cheering like I had just <laughs> won the Olympics. It was insane. It was the last shot they had to do before they went on hiatus. Mm. And they got to go home early. And everyone was just like, oh, my God. I can't believe we did that. It was just so – it was a relief, but it was awesome. And uh, it's a cool shot, too. So, like, actual – a visual. I'm going to so. go grab that and watch that. That's awesome. It's a clip. So, yeah, if you're ever in the East Coast, yeah. we're going bowling. We'll set up some trick shots. We have an alley. We could do it back there, but they kicked us out. So, yeah. That would have been so fun to bowl in the alley. <sighs> but, alley bowling. We used to play bowling Wait, like bocce. A bowling alley or no, an alley? Like, alley like in New York. York. An alley in the Bronx. My buddies and I in middle school, <laughs> we bought like bowling balls from a garage sale, and then we would play bowling in the neighborhood. Just like bocce, like all right, that mailbox, yeah. but like it was like you know throw like bowl at like fifty feet on the bowling balls got chipped to shit, but it was pretty fun. Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah that's why I was like, oh, we can't throw my balls up down the alley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to get. You have to, you have to buy some. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Well, hey, thank you very much oh, for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you for uh, tuning you. in and watching, watching, take me out. Yeah, I'm glad that we didn't, you didn't click on it and then get upset or anything. Because <laughs> I'm the same yeah, as you. I'm like, I don't know. Why what would we I, said. I wouldn't be here. That was the first thing when you yeah, did the email. I, I was like, what were we mean? What did we say? <laughs> but awesome. Yeah. Thank Good. you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Where should Thank we send you. people that are trying to keep keep up with you? Where are you most active? Um, well, I am going to be on a TV show soon called American Crime Story Impeachment. I'm on episode seven. Okay. Right. Probably can't say, probably can't even say that, okay. but I'll say that. Which, well, you won't and say then, that. We um, said that. Yeah. <laughs> You'll just find it. And then um, I actually have been on a sketch comedy team for like se seven years. Um it's called Ooch Comedy. If you guys can go to our page, we do a lot of sports and Marvel uh, sketch videos and then also pop culture and stuff like that. Um, so that's O-O-C-H Comedy. It's on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Ooch um, Comedy. Ooch Comedy. Awesome. Ooch. Ooch. Yeah. Awesome. All right, we are... Uh... Gonna go draft Dumb and Dumber quotes. That's the second half of the show. So big day, big oh, big, awesome. big day ahead of us at work. <laughs> <laughs> Times thank, are good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nicole. Claps in the thank chat you guys. for Nicole. Thank you guys so much. Of course, be good. Oh. All right. Ooh, that, that was, was awesome. awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. I have the episode of Superstore up because I need to see this bowling shot now. Yeah, I was trying to see if I could find it quick, and I couldn't. Um, yeah, I think I'll have it in less than a couple seconds. It's season three, episode 15. Amnesty is the name of the episode. And mm, never mind. I did a scrub through. Did a scrub through. Couldn't find the shot. We'll find it. Man, all right. We got halftime, and then we'll do draft, or what are we doing? Just draft? Probably go go to the draft first. I think we are going to have a big halftime thing. Either way, read something. Let's do halftime quick. Let's eat something, and then we'll do the draft. Read one of these while I master finding this shot. Halftime brings a people together. Halftime. Go check go. out your Gabby insurance. Halftime. And whatever... Um, Go give Nicole love. That was cool. Yeah, Ooch Comedy on Instagram. That was her biggest point. She was great. Um, also great, Gabby Insurance. You guys might have, I forget if we talked about it on here or where we did it, but I, I like giving the true story. Formerly intern Luke, now sales Luke, birth like a horse. <coughs> he told us, he's like, hey, we got a new someone we want to partner with. Uh, but you guys actually have to, like, do it. And we we both audibly groaned to be dramatic. And then we did it. And I'm the least tech-savvy person you may ever come across. It shocks people unless, when they see unless it Unless they meet your, um, Unless they, meet, unless they know my mom. Yeah. But, like, that's even more expected because at mm -hmm. least she's a mom. Yeah, and less shocking. She's got the, the veneer of just being people a mom. People assume I would be good with technology. So bad. Um... Gabby Insurance, G-A-B-I. We went through it. We went through the whole process. And what it does, it gets you an insurance rate, the best one. It compares everything. I mean, you've probably dealt with other websites or apps that, that work this way. It's Gabby.com, G-A-B-I.com slash John Boy. And you basically, you punch in your info. Um... And then it brings you 40 of the top insurance providers, progressive, nationwide, travelers. Uh, you punch in your current insurance information. It brings up all the policies. Again, we did it. And I did. I fought it. I was like, no, this is going to end poorly. I'm going to be mad at myself for not being good with technology. You're going to be mad at me because you're going to think this is like, oh, Jake's making a joke. And then I'm just going to be embarrassed. No. Gabby, they made it work. Save $900. Okay. Okay. I'd, I'd use that, and then I'd spend it elsewhere. So I wouldn't be like, I guess it's saving. It's yeah. reusing. Yep. Uh, go put your policy to test. Get a better insurance with Gabby. It's free. No obligation. Gabby.com slash John Boy. G-A-B-I dot com slash John Boy. Go check him out. Go do it.
It's a nice shot, this bowling shot. She's proud of it. I uh, what she I'm, should be. What I'm doing is I'm making a gif of it, and I'll just tweet it out from Holy smokes, John Boy and Jake Radio baby, TV channel. Look at these gifts. Oh, my God. We got a lot of presents. This one, first package is from Gilbert, Arizona, it says. Gorgeous Ooh. this time of year. No, I actually have to disagree with that. I don't think it is gorgeous this time of year. It's messed up, dude. Again, the Arizona high country is absolutely beautiful. Um, I'll check the weather. 90 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. Do you want to play heat. the halftime so that, whistle? Or that basically doesn't really matter. comes out to 72 degrees on the East Coast. It's halftime. It looks like it's from Campbell AZ Confections from Chris, whose card says he's the owner slash head honcho. Like yeah. that. Anytime you say honcho, I'm going to be into that. Owner slash head honcho. Badass. Okay, we've got something wrapped. There's a little a bit bag of like in a that. bag. There's a little bit of that like travel ice that you send with stuff that travels. Yep. But it looks like very nice packaging. If these are something similar to Swedish fish, we're going to be in for a bad time. Well, I we've, we've had Swedish fish in the office for the last couple of weeks, uh, and you've it's done well. It's just when I start eating them. Uh, yeah, but have you eaten them? No. You've done well. The second they, they I get can't. broken open. I just tweeted out the gif of the bowling shot from JJ uh, TV account. If you're interested, BBD, if you just want to watch it here. Um, I said bold in the shot. In, in the in the store. Ooh, yeah. Okay. And I couldn't it, I was trying to does, think about what like a bowling shot what it, was a bowling scene that happened. It does, like it's a deep shot, and it looks like she's missing to the right. And, and then it looks it like right. then it looks like the curve's gonna curve too much, but it, right there it just starts balancing out. Yeah. I'll say this. So she mentioned that the set mentioned that there was a curve or a turn at one point. It's a makeable shot. I understand the pressure's in play. Well, one shot, though. Mm. Right. And it's not she as wide a set as like a as like it's bowling a very, It's pins. a great shot. And I can't imagine hearing all the little boy stuff, too. All the, hearing all the voice stuff. People walk across. Jim, it looks like we've got taffies. I'm trying to see if they're labeled with flavors because there's three bags here. And the one I opened first looks like it's a it's a greenish brown color, so I don't know the flavor. It looks like a kiwi almost. Well, there's some dark spots on this. Is there no notes or anything? It just it just uh, I, mean, I am currently noteless. That. I'm getting a kiwi vibe. I'm worried about what It looks like a kiwi. Are we all have the same flavor? Are you eating? We all Can you show the side camera? What's I'm worried about like this. Oh, no, it is. That just looks like a sugar. Mm, like yeah. a brown sugar? When you open it, yeah. I can't drop. I think it's kiwi. Okay, softer than I thought, which I like. I'm chewing currently. What flavor do we think this is? Okay. I think it is. I don't just know. got a flavor that didn't seem kiwi. It can't, I couldn't tell you what a kiwi tastes like, so I don't know. It's not apple, is it? I got... I liked it. I think it's apple. I think it's a, a very a soft, soft apple. hint of apple. I was expecting it to be kiwi, so I wasn't... I liked it. So I th and I think I was getting apple by the end. At the beginning, you know, you trick, you know, your taste buds trick you. Do you guys want me to crank another? Do you want me to open them and find a flavor if, that looks like we'd like? Yeah, find like another flavor. Sure I would not have like. chose green. It are was you, good. Are you though. going in any of the other packages? Just two more packages. We, uh, this looks like a poster. I wonder if someone made a picture of us or would something. love a poster. Sometimes those cylinder packages don't open that easily. You've got it open real easy. Pretty strong uh, cylinder package opener. Yeah. No, I think that was loose. Ooh, this one looks more like a cake looks vibe. Looks like the note just fell out. Yeah, and there's a couple one. notes in there. There's a sticker in here. Okay, so this package. Hello! Hello in there. Um, has a note. Thanks so much for your order. I hope these are displayed proudly in your home as an early indication to your guests that they won't find any meat 
and potatoes record collections here. Mm. <laughs> I like the start of this. What is happening? Someone ordered this for us, I'm guessing? I'm guessing someone ordered I'm this so for us. I'm so happy to share my ITY Yep, I SL. think you should leave. I think you should leave Creations with you. I hope you like it. If you like it as much as you say you do. <laughs> if you liked it as much as you say you do. Do you want to read this? I think it's like all in it's your in t- It's language. in your voice, and I think you should leave, and I'll open it. Update, <clears throat> update on the, what is this, toffee? Taffy. 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 We uh, have one that looks like birthday cake pops. I think that's the winner. How do you think it looks like that? Oh, there's sprinkles. I've never seen that in a taffy before. How did I miss that? Sorry, BBD. Uh, you're good. So we're going to eat this, BBD. Thanks. You you read us through the I think you should. <clears throat> Thanks so much for your order. hope these are displayed proudly in your home as an early indication to your guests that they won't find any meat and potatoes record collections there. I'm so happy to share my I think you should leave creations with you. I hope you like it. If you like it as much as you say you do, instead of giving the receipt to Lev to eat, please take a photo of your post or wherever it's displayed uh, and share it with your followers on Twitter. Um, and then if we decide to do that, I'll read you what the at is to tag in there. Read um, it. I'm fine. Okay. They sent us a thing. Mm-hmm. If you tag me at Garveston Reggie, G A V R V E S T O N Reggie, the na- like the name you think, um, I promise to retweet it. Some feedback on Etsy that would also would also be fantastic. I don't know if we have access to that, to that but somebody sent this to us from an Etsy shop. Okay. Uh, pretty clearly. Thanks again. Be careful with the gazpacho. It's been sitting out at room temperature. Uh, Bozo did the dub uh, from RG. He was like, hot spacho. Jake, what's the taffy company called? Because that tasted like I just ate. Um, someone took the frosting of yes. a cake, uh, wrapped it up, put it in a freezer. I'm not convinced that what we're eating is taffy. It tastes like. I don't like, know. That mm. tasted like. It doesn't feel as like. They took frosting from a teeth. cake, put it in the freezer, and sent it to us. That's what that just tasted like. Made it like bite size. No note from the taffy? We don't know who sent this I'm to not seeing a note. Um, anyway. Let's open up whatever. Clown pewter sticker. <laughs> mm, that's just good. Oh, there's just a clown pewter? Fucking clown pewter. Probably got no games. Fuck that. Oh, dude, this is from Fail. <laughs> oh. After no. the Denver trip, wanted to show my appreciation for BBD and Zach. Saw these, couldn't pass up the idea of having them a matching set. So this is for you and Zach from Fail. Thank you very much, Fail. Uh, clown pewter is the oh. one sticker. And then, oh, there's matching things oh, here. What <laughs> the? Marcus the Worm Hicks. Whoa. With Tiny Boop, Squig, Shorterly, and the Pointer Brothers. Did Fayo make that? No, no, he bought them from Etsy. Okay. I I see all that. Wow. Paul Buffano, duh. Paul Buffano's great. <laughs> 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 Special guest Roy Donk. <laughs> oh my god Oh Robert Palin's Yeah <laughs> No gospel music Robert Palin's murdered me Colgate Comedy Hour <laughs> That's For you This Fayo. is good Claps in the chat oh, for Fayo. yeah King Fayo. Um Clown pewter sticker belongs to the office I'm taking claim to that <laughs> Zach's here Unless you want to put this on your computer. It should be on a clown pewter. It needs yeah. to be on a computer. Yeah, it'll be on BBD's computer. Yeah. Fail yeah, got you coming. Did you see it? It's coming to Milwaukee with us. Oh. Oh, what? This? I saw the poster. Yes. Zach says they look really good. There you go. And then this has to go on your computer. Clown yeah, pewter sticker. Robert Payne <laughs> murdered me. What is this, a clown pewter? Fail. Oh, wow. Great job by Fail. That's right. amazing. One, one more package. Here. There are scissors more. there if you want them. I'm going to do the Oakmont trick. Mm. Okay. Oakman taught me that at, at Domino's. You just shove it in and rip it over. Oh, I just kind of, like, try that a lot. Campbell's AZ Confections, an Arizona homemade confection maker. I make an assortment of candies. These candies are a mix between taffy and nougat. Mm. That adds up. Approved and gluten free. Um, so I'm on their so Instagram that's why, right that's now. That's the part of it that doesn't feel like the traditional taffy in your mouth feeling. Looks like it's and Instagram it's really good. and Facebook. Campbell's AC Confection, AZ Confections. Um, yeah, I don't, pretty cool. I'll see if there's a note again. That's the only thing missing, but. Um, 
All right, so and there was another one that kind of looked like cake with a red accent, so I'm hoping it's like a strawberry shortcake flavor. Oh, we can eat that as well. Got that one. This one. I am um, interested. I, I don't know. This seems like it's for the ad department, a company that might want to work with us. Fair enough. If you want to take a look. I, I'll do an emergency peek. I don't think that's a gift from someone. I think that's a company selling us samples of their product. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I get that sense. So two packages. Two great packages. Oh, what's on the inside of this one? Yeah. I can't tell. That's a taffy and a taffy. Or maybe a nougat in a taffy. Or maybe a taffy and a nougat. This tastes like the um those candies that are Tootsie Rolls, but they're not. They're like white and yellow and red. Footsie rolls. What are those called? I'm not sure. What a halftime. Shout out Fayo. Yeah. These. Tootsie Fruities? That's what this tastes like, a Tootsie Fruity. Tootsie Fruit? Yeah, it's accurate. All right, we got a big draft coming up. We have a big draft coming up. It looks like producer BBP, a.k.a. the P Festival, just went to maybe indulge in that. And I kind of have to pee. Um, while we have a second, I wouldn't, I told, I gave Jimmy hints of this via text. Um, I got a haircut yesterday. Yep. You know, I get back. I, you know, was doing some work stuff and then the Yankees game was towards the end. So I was at the office for that. And then... I realized it. I thought it was back to back double headers. Didn't someone tell us that it was a rolling double header? No, I'm I had th- mentally thought that all day. That's why I drove home. I know, um, and I would have done that. I thought it was rolling double header because you said you were going to do Instagram live from the road, anyways. So I was the like, first plan was to watch the full first game here. Do right. talking baseball after the game. Do pregame show on the right, road. Right, right, right. Doesn't matter at all. So I go home, supposed to do date night with Jess, uh, and did. But I had like two hours, got there like five. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get a haircut quick. We got a road trip coming up. I guess we talked about that on here a little bit. Go in, place I've been going, and uh, go to get a haircut. Guy starts going. A nice fella, younger than me. Um, conversation on and off. Not great. But he's... He's doing, he's going to town, and he's, like, very focused, and he has a game plan, and it was, like, impressive to watch. 15 minutes, I basically get this haircut, and I'm like, cool, good, let's shake hands and keep it going, because that's how every haircut I've ever had has gone. But he keeps going, and he looks very focused, very detailed, and I'm like, okay, maybe I'm dealing with the king here. Like, mm-hmm. he's, this could be it. Thorough. He's going to make a decision for you. About another half hour later. I'm like, what the hell are we doing? Um, so he finally does, and this is how lost in the haircut I was. He unbuttons a button back there, and he's like, all right. And I stand up. I'm like, all right, great. Thank you. And he's like, dude, we haven't even shaved your neck yet and, like, trimmed around the edges. And I was like, we haven't done that yet? It's a fun what part of a haircut, too. Doing? It's my favorite part. So we did that, and I, was, I kept, like, busting out the phone. Like, dude, I kind of got to go. So then I went, but it it did hit the point where I thought I was I thought I was getting punked. He was he was cutting off the smallest amounts of hair, and he kept doing the you know when they size up the part they're gonna cut and they grab it in their fingers. Mm-hmm. He would do that, and but it, say nah. but it would take him ten passes. Like he'd do like practice one. Nope, 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 nope. That's funny. Nope, nope, nope. He wasn't yep. making a cut till he was ready. And then he trimmed like the smallest amount of hair. So hey, an absolute Thorough. artiste. But uh I couldn't believe it. I was there for an hour. Yeah. I got a haircut. This- I went to one haircut place in California that did that. They like would take the little zzz buzzers mm. 
and they'd go real close and get like any hair that was a little mm. longer than her. And I loved it. I was like, it's kind of right. cool. And that noise zzz, by your head for like 10 minutes would just put me to sleep. Yeah. That's where if I knew that, like I like I like my dude. Um, what's his name? Long Island. It was like a three letter. I'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, if I knew it going in, I would have been like, had an hour to shut down and be like, all right, have a blast up there. Dude. You kept thinking you were like but five minutes away I from I was leaving. trying to get the 15-minute haircut. So When Katie cuts my hair, she, she goes slow with it. It's nice if you're ready for that. Expectations, people. I try telling you. Expectations. Boop, no. boop, boop, Someone boop, in the boop, chat boop, said Dumb and Dumber's not a good movie. Uh-huh. And you got to leave now. Yeah. I mean, I... And the chat might have to go anyways, right? Yeah, chat's going to have to go anyway. Um, but we didn't want it to be on these terms. I, man, I was... I, had, I didn't watch the full thing because I've been very busy. But even the first 15 minutes, I wrote down almost every line said. Yeah, it got... It got tricky. Um, hey, if you don't know, and the people do know, Dumb and Dumber Draft, we told you guys to re-watch it. A lot of you probably know it, some of you didn't. Um... Well, yeah, and me and Jimmy in BBD, I don't want you to feel exiled on this. We had literally a three-second conversation on it. The part that turned out to be interesting for me on this is so much of the humor is physical. Mm-hmm. So much of it is Jim Carrey just letting him go. Um, I mean, Jeff Daniels is just as electric as it gets playing Harry, so... It was tough. That made it that that was the tough part. The me. the rules of the draft that we set forth um cuz we did the super bad draft and we said you had one quote per character. You couldn't mm, do the same character twice. Repeat a character. This is so much more of a two man show that we said you can repeat one. So you have to have four from four different people and then you get one double up. Because there's just so too we're going many. five rounds. Yep. Okay. Mm. That's what we said, right? I, mean, I don't think we officially said it, but I know we did five rounds for. We Super did that bad. for the last one. I know we wanted to mix up the characters. I'm open to conversation yeah. on it because it's it's so much. I'm just like, them. I'm just at, I'm I'm nervous about literally having enough, but like I'll be able to figure it out. Whatever you guys want to do. Like I might even go four with one double. It's just not. That's what I said. Four four you rounds. Had, I thought you had five. You had, I thought oh, you were saying so five three, rounds. Three, three, three different characters different you can double one four rounds. Yes. All right, there's a lot of good quotes, though. There's a lot of good quotes, there's a lot but of good most quotes. of them are the two Then dudes. can we just do them? Like that's. I guess that's what we're all dancing around right now. Oh, I, whatever you two want to do. I'm fine. I prepped for, for that. If, we, if I, we go to five rounds and you can double up both of the two main guys. And you do a Lloyd. You have to do two Lloyds, two Harry. And then one ran that I can very comfortably at least accomplish the draft. Right. This was the first time I've watched the movie, so that's just that's why I'm I'm at Branson. But I, I'm open to whatever. I'll play. I think we I'll need to go five rounds. rounds. There's too let's much. Go, good. Let's go five. Two Lloyd. Two Harry. <clears throat> random. You can do more than okay. two. Okay. All right. If you've got other, gonna have to abandon more. some of my randoms that I love. It's fine. You can still do them. You just no, because if they're not going to beat out a Lloyd or Harry. Right. You're random. Yeah. All right. So we have to write down things. Um, do mm. something. And this draft is brought to you by Magic Spoon Cereal. There's nothing like sitting mm. at home, watching Dumb and Dumber, oh. feeling good, and eating some cereal. That's the best. And the best problem that you won't face is unhealthiness. Because this is guilt-free cereal. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Only 140 calories a serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. You can build your own box or get a variety pack with available flavors. Can I tell you guys something? Caitlin, my wonderful Mm. Caitlin, went shopping yesterday. I said, can you pick up some cereal? I'm out of Magic Spoon. I have to reorder from, from them. She got uh, some cereal from the healthy section that says like it's keto, it's a, it's keto free. A lot of this stuff, mm-hmm. I tried it. You know what it did? It tasted like it was all that stuff. Mm. Magic Spoon tastes sweet still. There's still very much a sweet. 
candy, sugary, even though there's zero grams sure. of sugar, flavor to it. So I was like, man, I got to order some Magic Spoon. And you can too if you go to magicspoon.com slash johnboy. Grab your delicious cereal and try it today. And be sure to use promo code johnboy at checkout to save $5. They're so confident you'll enjoy the product. It's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your, mon- your money. No questions asked. Get your next delicious bowl of guilt free cereal at magicspoon.com. Slash John Boy and use the code John Boy to save five dollars off. Mm. Okay, I need a pen or something. Have a pen. Do we have paper? I guess you're right on that. That thanks. Magic spoon. Do you need one more pen? This is Should be another. The next one we have to do. All right, I am writing down a number, and I've written it down. The number mm. that I wrote down, I've I like written what down. I, I did. wrote down. You like, like what you? I did. like my number today. Uh, I wrote down number twenty-four. I'm about 33% I'm winning this. The whole draft or just this number? This number. Okay. BBD, what number did you write down? 23, so anything Whoa. lower, I've got you. 55 for Matsui. Small window for me. What'd you do? 37. I did 24. 24. I think you probably 13. have it, right? Wow. I think he's got it. What did you write down? 55. So 55 I'm, minus I'm 37 18. is 18. We were all around it. Wow. I can't believe I won that. I had the smallest. Well, I beauty had a small margin, but he got anything lower than me. Yeah, right. I was sandwiched. Uh, I'm going to take the first overall. That's the number of numbers I could win. First overall. Wowie, wow, 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 wow. I will be taking the first overall. So is that. Am I the second pick? You're two. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll take three, four, wrap around. I will choose the middle. Um, okay. Two guys surrounding me. Bom, bom, ba, da, 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 do, 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 do. BBD, I'm so excited that you, like, never watched this with your adult. Brain. Yeah, I, I knew, th- I have literally seen it, but when I watched it over the weekend, I was like... This is the first time I've seen it. I, I didn't retain anything other than a couple mm. a couple lines. But um, paid break. Okay, with my first pick overall, I am taking um, our pets' heads are falling off. Okay, it's all time from Lloyd. Um, a lot of all timers. That's all time. With this jump, we got no food. We got no jobs. Our pets' heads are falling off. Quotability's there. Uh, initial humor is there. Yeah. Um, so I'm taking our pets' heads are falling off. That's one of my Lloyd picks. Mm. It's a good pick. It's a good pick. I mean, so many all time quotes in this. Um, this movie held up just as well as I thought it would when I was watching it. Like I, if not every time I watch it, I find something new funny. <clears throat> you may yes. want to close the chat, by the way. Um, chat. See you later. Enjoy yourselves. Okay. So Jake, you're up. <laughs> I think where I'm going to go with this, um, and you know, not to give away too much strategy. It, because in BBD, this was exchanged between me and Jimmy before. I think if it if we did all of the best quotes, if it was like 100 best quotes, it would probably be 50 Jim Carrey, 40 Jeff Daniels, and then 10 random. I mean, I, I think I'd, Jim I'd Carrey's... Up it. I'd up it to like 75 yeah, Jim, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey has the best quotes in this movie. I, he has, I think he has the better ones on repeat viewings. Yeah. So, like, like, this is the first time I've seen it. Kind of my whole board is Harry okay. quotes. Okay, interesting. Wow. Interesting. So, I, interesting. I gave away too much. I think I'm going to take a Harry um, because... Yeah. Well, I just told you. Uh, yeah. It's my whole board. Well, no. I, I was yeah. My whole thing was building up to, I think there's more Lloyd quotes out there. So, I want to take the Harry mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. I want. Um, I am going with when he says, look at the fun bags on that hose hound. Right after saying they're talking about how they need to be class, they give like a passionate speech about how they're starting a new <laughs> life and they need to be classy and make the turn. 
and he just stares at the beautiful blonde woman and goes, look at the fun bags on that hose hound. And then I I probably can't steal it. It is closely attached to get some get some. Is bowls it the same of, scene? Get some bowls of loudmouth soup, yes. What are you doing here? You can't take two different picks. That's they're like the they're same. They're not the same quote. Okay. Okay, that's what I was asking. Because they are very much connected to each but other. But it's a quote. Like, they're, they're, it's like, you know. Right. We did some of this in Superbad. That's very much... That's it's a, like that's all... a part of it. It's part of what factored into that pick. <laughs> all we gotta do is show a little class, a little sophistication, and we're in like a dirty shirt. And that's no problem, Lloyd. We can be classy and sophisticated. Oh, look at the fun bags on that hose hound. <laughs> I'd like to eat her liver with some farver beans and a nice bottle of key ante. So for me, when they go the... Ruins it for me. Right, because they go mainstream, which, again, going back to 1994 and how yeah. big Silence of the Lambs I like that is, line. I almost put that. it down. I almost paused to write it down, and then they did the Farber Beans, Chianti, and I was like, ah, nah. Not that's not part of my quote. Well, that's why I was saying the next part you're trying to claim. Well, because Harry's still, still rolling, but it's all right. That's why we had a discussion about it. BBD heads to fall <clears throat> off about it. I'm going with a Lloyd quote in the first round. Okay. Um, park quotability. Um, it, we use it around the office decently often, and he says it a couple times. I think uh, I'm taking. I like it a lot. Just the real world applications of being able to say it the fun way he says it. Uh, I'm taking it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. All time. God, the quotability play. His facial expressions, man. Yeah, no, it's incredible. <laughs> Feels good to mingle with these laid back country folk, don't it, Hair? I like it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then I'm gonna go for a Harry quote on my wraparound. Um, going towards the end of the movie, mm. they're being held hostage. Uh, they're talking about. The kiss and ass, mm. and uh, and it it really just it it's hit me really well. Both cheeks, both lips. <laughs> <laughs> nom, 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 nom. <laughs> right here. <laughs> That's good, baby day. <laughs> <laughs> both cheeks, both lips. Line. That wasn't on my board, but that's a good one. Um, man, both cheeks, both lips, Harry. Yeah, that's um, that's a great pull, BBD. I mean, that's obviously not, and that's going to be that's, the mix. Here. I've watched this so many times and quoted so many things, and I think that's. I agree with you. It's great, but it's never great oh, line. It's not one of the quotable. You just tell me where to sign, bud. <laughs> right on my ass after you kiss it. Kirsty, you kiss my both cheeks, both lips, right here. Come on, come on, come on. Shut up! Shut up! God. That's good, BBD. It's a good pick. Jake? It's a good pick. All right, back to me. Um, I mean, my heart is already in this. I'm, I'm so done with strategy. Um, it's, it's obvious. It's been used a lot in our society. For me, one of the tests when rewatching a movie, especially a movie I know that well, is when do I get the first... Rewatch cackle, new laugh, like it, cackle. like it just. It's not a new laugh. It's it's just which one got me today. And man, the one that got me last night. They're building up. They're building up. You're finding out who the characters are. A, they pick up the hitman who's about to kill them, and then there's a pause after they go Jimmy Jake Bicker mode, and then he Jim Carrey turns to him and he says, "Do you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Because <laughs> that is." the most ridiculous sentence that you can say to a person. <laughs> <laughs> I, dude, I lost it. And I've probably, you know, I've seen the movie and that scene probably like closer to triple figures than, than zero. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And man. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? So uh, a lot of people laugh at the sound, but you're finding humor in, in just like that question. He's yes. proposing and that you just picked up a random man 
You think he wants to hear the most annoying sound <laughs> who, in the who world? Who just got pissed well, off at you guys? He's trapped in between them. <laughs> so you, do you know that this was completely improvised? And that's why you can hear Jim Carrey holding back laughs he as he says yeah. it. And if you watch... Um, Jeff, what's da- Daniels? He, the smile. he just loses it. They have to cut really quick because look at him <laughs> on the right. He's just about to go. They have to cut to a new shot because uh, he because and you can listen to the way Jim Carrey says it. You can tell he's holding back laughter as he says it. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> 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 oh, that's a good one. Um, and I, I don't know if this is controversial. If this is a mid-draft convo, I, Jim, you know I'm not well classed. BBD. Everyone listening knows that. I think the acting in this movie is good. Like it's obviously a ridiculous movie, but like Italian mobster guy, he's they're, good. They're little character. They're playing characters, but in a good right. way. Right, like in a in they a semi-legitimate right. way. Yeah. Okay, Jim, you have the double up. So that's your Lloyd. All right, yeah. Um, I'm just drafting for me because I just want to draft about things that are funny. Sure. Um, where the fuck's all my notes? Um, this is a play on my first pick. So they go hand in hand. So I'm fine with that. It's, uh, yeah, he was pretty old. <laughs> when he ah. says... That's a says, you pick. That's good. That's a you pick. He that's says, good. He says, um, Petey died. He says, how did Petey die? And he says, his head fell off. And he says, what? He says, yeah, he's pretty old. <laughs> Dude, there's a lot of, there's a lot of dumb casual conversations in Dumb and Dumber <laughs> that, oh my God. <laughs> his head fell off. Yeah, he was pretty old. That's good. That's, dude, that's such a good line. And again, people jump to the my first pick. Our heads, pets are falling right. off as the funniest joke from that bit. But it, it's that's the number one them. pick. But um, it's this whole movie is littered. Yeah, he was pretty with lines and jokes. What happened? His head fell off. His head fell off. Yeah, he was pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> good uh all right um dude all my picks are from like that scene (laughs) it's a good scene which like it is my favorite scene but uh, how much do i let me let me look at my board to see if i should move around the movie a little bit um (laughs) um dude i have a lot that like aren't things right uh, and I put a note that I didn't realize that the Peaky Blinders song is in Dumb and Dumber. Like, it came on in that scene, and I was like, oh, this is the theme song that of Peaky Blinders. That was the other thing I wanted to say. The music's good. I, the acting, pretty good. And the music's really Music good. Music really and well that, selected. That going on with that ridiculousness of Jim Carrey and Jan- Jeff Daniels is part of what makes it, like, a great all-time movie. The, uh, now the, probably- the Farrelly Brothers always have good soundtracks. Yeah. They, like... That's like their thing. They like finding good music. My uh, now seems like the time to drop this. I was nervous when it was going to be five rounds, only one repeat. Uh, I don't have like the deepest board that sure. I normally would for for this style of draft. Um, so I did put down a couple like soundtrack choices I Ooh. liked that were like, look at you. that's going to be my twist in like the fourth round when if I really need to pull something out. Okay. And the one, the one I would have picked was uh, after Harry stuck on the toilet. Uh, the Wizard of Oz, mm, which that got soundtrack right. got me like really that. good. Um, I have so <laughs> many picks that are just for me. Sure, I feel bad about That's it. That's okay. Like I don't care. Comment section and chat. I'm, I'm picking for me. It's the same exact scene. It's Run the, it. It's in the movie. It's um, man, you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's uh, that. I mean, that is. Sometimes Man. I watch like that. Um, what am I trying to say? Like I don't like I was gonna say that's my kind of humor. Yeah. But I think, uh, that's only because of that. Right. So you get fired again, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. They always freak out when you leave the scene of an accident. You know. <laughs> <laughs> 
I almost picked yeah, that. Well, I lost my job too. <laughs> Man, you are one pathetic <laughs> loser. <laughs> Man, <clears throat> and that was definitely going through this, knowing that it was 1994 when it came out, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, I was, you know, looking around at my different friends and how many of mine and their senses of humor are molded and twisted By because movies. of this movie. Like this movie in particular. Oh, yeah. Um, That's like, I, and I, I quote that too. That's like yeah. funny. Like, <laughs> you're one pathetic loser. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Right after he drops the no offense, which I think is the big joke, but I like the <laughs> oh. joke before the joke again. So that's, that's my back to back. That's good. I gotta um, say, guys, don't care if anyone doesn't like my board. I love my board. That's good. Um, that's the beauty of the of the movie dress. Yeah, I like the movie dress. Kind of, I don't feel pressured kind of, at all. I don't care right. if I, like I win. Right. Yeah, we all Let's, win. We're all winning. You, you get your picks for the most part, um, and that's where I'll go with this one. Um, it tripped me up so bad last night. Um, you know, they they have entered the hotel. They know they have money. You know, they celebrate. They do get all the speech and all that. The scene cuts. <laughs> they are crying and wiping their tears with money to a telephone commercial. And then a- as they're... Crying, watching a commercial, Harry turns to Lloyd and he says, This is living, huh? <laughs> <laughs> These two guys that have lived in poverty and are trying to escape their lives have now stumbled into money. They've gotten one of the finest hotels in the world. And what are they doing? Crying in bed together, wiping their tears with money from a commercial. It's, I, for me, I think what made me laugh so much was, how do you write that in a script? Yeah, you don't. How? That's impossible. Man, this is living, huh? (laughs) A commercial. Like, you'd normally think, like... A movie? Anything. (laughs) Anything. Well, remember when we were doing watching and they got us that commercial and we were, like, crying? Maybe that's what the Fairleys knew and we didn't. Uh, this is a long one because I think they, they – it's trying to grab the clip right here. I've been pretty good at grabbing the clips, like, very You've been fastly. great at grabbing the clip. Yeah. Like snaps for grabbing I don't even the clips. knows how good I am at grabbing clips. <laughs> Rain brought them to him. My brother was Sarah Carver. Although at the time he wasn't sure he wanted to accept the gift. Nick, do you think he'll let us stay? No, this place is ugly anyway. You and me, we're family. Promise never to give away. And no one's ever gonna break us apart. At the same time, we believe that's pretty special. Wow, boy, this is living. (laughs) (laughs) I forgot they slow play the commercial reveal. Because it's kind of, like, again... I just don't get how you get there. I don't get how you get a full camera crew set up, the actors and everything, and that's what comes out, and it's incredible. So, BBD, you have the <clears throat> wraparound? Yeah. Now that I'm here making the decisions, there were a lot more Lloyd picks on my board than I originally okay. thought, which I'm excited about. There's a few. Like, I'm, I'm willing to leave it up to Jake to maybe whittle it down and take one off my, take one off my plate. Probably won't, oh, but I'm not going to take a I Lloyd pick that. now. Um... I got lost. I got whittled. I'm between a couple Lloyd picks. I'm willing to. <clears throat> Jake's next round is probably going to be. You don't mind one. if he steals I don't one. mind if it gets oh, stolen wow. and he okay. just makes okay. an easier decision I'm for me. Whittling oh, a wood okay. over here. Yeah, yeah. Dainty. Uh, so I think I'll go with the with an I- iconic scene line play. I'm going to Harry. Just when I thought you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this and totally redeem yourself. It's used a lot in the streets. It's kind of. You know, it's a it's a bit of an obvious pick, but I do want it, and it is obvious for a reason. It's all time. Yeah, it's it's all. That's time. probably if you Google it's the Family Feud, like yes. number one pick. Yeah, to this if movie. you Google like Dumb and Dumber, which I didn't even because they were so disappointing with um, Super Bad, so I didn't even Google that. But that's definitely up there. 
It's, and it's, it's so it's that or the, the, reason, the reason it is so good is because uh, spinning it back to the acting, the scene before that where they break up, it's it's a genuine Jim like good lets out fight. The sad yell at the you end. Know, Lloyd, just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, <laughs> you go and do something like this <laughs> and totally redeem yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Traded it for the band, straight up. <laughs> Dude, how does Jim Carrey steal that scene so well? He's so his, good. His facial expressions, like, in this scene, it's unreal. <laughs> Again, you know, sometimes when we do our Patreon photos with Sam, we tell her, like, you know, give us a funny emotion so we could try to do a funny face. <laughs> his, his face in that scene. I mean, when it cuts to <laughs> how Jim Carrey's listening and he's making that face, Just, that's the bigger joke. Like, just blind confidence? Like, how would you describe that face? <laughs> yeah, confidence. Straight just like, the van for the bike, straight this up. Great, this is. <laughs> and then that laugh at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Oh, man. Quality pick. I remember when Nick Swisher made an error in right field, and then he made, like, a great diving catch, and they asked uh, A.J. Burnett about it, and he said that. He said, just when he couldn't do anything dumber, he goes and totally redeems himself. And that was the first time I just... Heard like an athlete just do a movie quote in the press conference. Mm. Oh, that's cool. So now I'm going to go to my non-Harry, non-Lloyd. Okay. Interesting. It's technically the first one off the board. I'm curious how it's going to be received. This is going to be kind of obvious. Again, first time I have watching one, the movie. I have one that I want so bad, so mm. I'm pretty nervous. I have I have two that I would have been comfortable taking here, um, but I'm going to uh, – I don't think you, either of you are going to be mad that I took it. At the phone booth. Fuck! Ah! <laughs> ah! Fuck! Wow. Oh, shit! Wow. Oh, keep going. Well, now, well, Dude, now I'm, I'm scared I'm gonna it's going to be I'm going to hold guy. on for hope. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to hold out for hope, but what do you got? Oh, well, so these are the two in between. Mm. <sighs> hey. All right, I'm going to take the guy that comes over, knocks on the door. Knocks on the door. Sorry, do you, you ever hear about the concept of other people, Um, me being that? For the phone. Oh, you turned your back on me. Oh, I almost like it. <laughs> God fucking damn wow. it, dude. That's the most wow. I've ever been snaked ever. Oh, my God. Snake. Uh, oh, you turned your back on me. He got me mad. I almost like it. It's so fucking funny, dude. That guy has no business being that funny in that scene. Like, he's supposed to be the dweeb that you hate. Yeah. Um, great pick. God, I'm upset. Mm, wow. That was the one non-them that I wanted so bad. Do you, have you noticed this before? Yeah, it's, it's he's, that's such a relatable emotion oh, he got me mad. for the almost pathetic like person. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you turned your back on me. Oh, he got me mad. I almost. Ah, <laughs> uh, it cuts off. Got me mad. I almost like him. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. Um, like. Yeah, man. That's such a relatable feeling. Mm. Yeah, no. I'm going to try and get it again and, and not have the end cut off. Great pick, BBD. Great pick. BBD with a monster snake. My good. Um, it's so funny. Because <laughs> you, like you're saying, you know that feeling. Sir. Yes. Oh, yes. You uh, turned your back on me. Oh, 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 he got me mad. I almost like it. You and Sherry. I almost like it is such a good phrase. Yeah. I almost, almost like yeah. it. I almost like it, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Really, really good work, BBD. Um, good job, BBD. Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to leave my, my last character, give Jom a chance to, to snake. I really only have one out there. We'll see. We'll see. Um, going through my notes on this is hilarious because the way I decided to take notes last night was texting myself. So I just have doubles <laughs> of each line. Um, You're so weird, dude. Yeah. There's a notes There's app. There's a notes app. It's for... Taking notes. I don't go to the notes app. I've tried it. Um, Every day. Okay. I've got one main 
mainstream. I've got one that just amongst the two characters. All right, I am going to go with. <laughs> so, they snap again. They've made it to Aspen. They've achieved their dream. They, you know, can't find Mary. So they are outside, beautiful Aspen, you know, freezing. And it's the famous two gloves. You've had two sets of gloves this whole time. (laughs) In the middle of the fight, as the briefcase opens, Jim Carrey is getting choked, and he screams at Lloyd, Harry, your hands are freezing! (laughs) 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 And it is just so good. So, so good. Oh, my God. Um, I like when he when he just says, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, Jakey's spin on, like, the acting in, in the movie. How good, <laughs> how good do are, this. As you're getting strangled because as you didn't share your gloves. <laughs> for, for, <laughs> <laughs> we're in Aspen. I'm going to do it! No! <laughs> so Okay Okay Is it me? I think so Your final two Final two, wow All right, So I need another Harry This is really hard I have like four that I I I don't. Um, one isn't even a thing he says, but we're not doing that, right? I'll just save that for post game mm. notes. Okay. I think so. All right. Okay. Um, again, I have two that are in similar circumstances. Okay. I, I don't know how well they fit because um, it's not like the quote itself, but I'm going to take it. The how's your burger? Mm. Um, it, that it, scene's hilar- That scene is hysterical. That might be my favorite scene. Because when, oh, dude, that scene, like earlier, when they go, uh, when he asks them a question, and first he says, you know, eat up and we'll tell you. And when he says that part, Jim Carrey looking the other way because he's laughing so hard. Cause, Cause he yeah. finds that funny Like they're just little five year olds And then When he says uh, How's your burger <laughs> It's so funny dude Because he's just trying to get it quick Like Trying to get him to eat. I Dude I don't know how to explain why but. I, I think why this hits so good Is again It's such a relatable feeling If you've ever, you know, you're itching, you're itching. If you're doing a dumb prank to itch with a friend and like you almost want to get caught, yeah, you either want to provoke it or get caught. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm getting out, but, uh, and it's a phrase that we say as a group of friends. And, you know, if anyone, if if something bad is about (laughs) to happen or has happened anyway, yeah, how's your burger? We've been saying that for years. Yeah. So, why are you going to ask him? Vacation? Why don't you eat up and we'll tell you. <laughs> this doesn't seem like you packed much. Uh, all I saw was one bag and that briefcase. No, 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 the briefcase isn't even ours. Some lady left at the airport. We're just bringing it back to her. How's your burger? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you know? Dude, Jim Carrey's Jim reaction. Carrey's reaction. <laughs> Well, Again, no, that's no, an no, emotional. Well, everyone on the some lady left everyone is We're just- and how he speeds through it, like at the end. Yeah, uh, it's <laughs> so good. The delivery is perfect. Lady left at the airport. We're just bringing it back to her. How's your burger? <laughs> <laughs> you mean you, you don't even know? Her? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was. I think he was about to break there too. All right, look at Jeff Daniels when uh, he Maybe says. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why they do the. This is the full zoom. Yeah, look when he says. <laughs> well, I think he's acting. It's also part of the acting. It works. It Jim works. You get to add. But look at when he says no, and he says, you don't even know her. <laughs> that looks like a, a coy little. <laughs> has to look away. And then they cut immediately. You don't even know her? 
<laughs> uh, how's your burger? That's my pick. Um, all right, so I need a non. The non. I'm not talking bread. Well, since BBD stole my one that I really, really yeah. wanted, um, I have. I just taken that same dude um, in the car scene when he just screams, guys, guys, guys. Oh, okay. The Italian, uh, the mobster. The mobster. Um, when he's, when, oh, that's not. So why are you going to ask? It's. Jim, guys, guys, guys. You mentioned our friends group has a lot of, a lot of things from this movie that have just been things we've used, but. Yes. Um. <laughs> it's right after the most annoying. Yes. <laughs> it's right after that. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I really wanted the other one. But I'll take guys. Because we say guys, guys, guys all the time. And then whenever people are getting out of hand. Guys, guys, guys. And then one of our friends' uh, phones auto-corrected it to. Guys, guys, gush. Guys, guys, gush. <laughs> and like I still say that now. Um, but yeah. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound <laughs> in the world? <laughs> guys, guys, guys! It's such, he does it so well, too. Yes. Like, it's really guys, good acting guys, in those three guys. guys. <laughs> Another emo a relatable emotion. Uh, all right, so that's my draft. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um... I uh, I am going with, and meant, so this is my non uh, Harrier Lloyd character, and I did struggle with this a little bit. I, I'm going with a little bit of a mainstream one. Um, I'm going with the police officer, um, who is and what I, th I think his name's Jeff something, um, but you know he pulls him over. The whole cardigan part of that, obviously, that's that's a part of our lexicon and a lot of people's. But uh, when he's hinting that they've been drinking, and he, it's a quiet line, BBD. <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with, it, but he says, "Give me the booze, you little pumpkin pie haircutted freak." <laughs> 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 oh. Which. <laughs> A is a really good burn <laughs> after you've been watching Jim Carrey's hair the whole movie, and then and his tooth, B, it's exactly. like good cop talk too. Yeah, um, like that is you know how they'd help a man of the law would put you under the table. Yeah, come on, give me that booze, you little pumpkin pie hair cutted freak. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Daniels yeah. face, and that was really good. Um. BBD, what don't you have? Do you have two Lloyds? I'm, I'm missing my Lloyd. My Lloyd. All right. Missing my last Lloyd. <laughs> Need it. <clears throat> okay, it's... <laughs> I'm, this is half a board play, but also I'm really taking the line after it. it mm. the, he says it. So you're telling me there's a chance. Then right after, he says, <laughs> I read you. <laughs> like, oh, we are on the exact same page. <laughs> so you're telling me there's a chance. I read you. <laughs> I, uh, my, the final two Lloyds I was down to was the your hands are freezing and the desperately <coughs> want to make love to a schoolboy. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, it's good. Building yourself up for a big speech and then just flooding it. I was, it I was between so three Lloyd picks for the last pick. The others were during the same both cheeks, both lips. He's, he, when he, he's, okay, kill him. Okay, <laughs> kill him. That's, that's very That's popular. very much in my <laughs> yeah. every day. And the other one uh, was when he's with Mary before that. Race it to the top. They literally <laughs> race her up the stairs. Trips her. They, like, just met. <laughs> I'd say. More like one out of a million. <laughs> so you're telling me there's a chance. <sighs> yeah! I read you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, that's good. Uh, Killer that's Boots good. Man was on my board. Killer Boots, man. Uh, the Big Gulps is obviously... Yeah, it's an all-time. 
You know what got me really good was good, excuse me, little old lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, little And then old another lady. one that's not a quote, but is so funny is just um Yeah, so, yeah, so <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You just want to go to Aspen to see that girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> um, the other couple I texted to myself last night, uh, Such Hell. Which one? That's when. Um, I know that, but. That's after Lloyd thinks he's been stood up. Harry comes back and tells him she must have meant 10 o'clock at night. And he's talking about all the pain he's been going through. And he's like, yeah, you know, 10 in the morning. Let's meet at a bar at 10 in the morning. That he's pretending to laugh because he knows Harry does it. And he says, uh, you know, he's just like, all this pain, everything I've been through, such hell. <laughs> <laughs> just rubbing it in his friend's face that put him under the bus. Um, I had that, and then there was. What else did I have here? Um, I said A very up. underrated line that I never picked up on. Or I feel like I haven't picked up on when in the very opening scene when he's talk he's looking at her and driving and saying how dangerous it is. Right. He says, um, getting trapped under a gas truck. That's the worst. <laughs> I have this cousin. Well, I had this cousin. <laughs> it's very it's very sneaky. Um, don't you go dying on me. And then, dude, the scene that cracks me up the most, but is nothing. And that's why it's funny. Right. That's the point of it. Is when he says, Excuse me, Flo. And Harry loses his <laughs> shit. Like, so I wrote as my, like, number one Harry pick was him laughing at the flow line. But it's yeah. not. It's illegal. Yeah. <laughs> but, um. No. That's pretty, that's pretty incredible. Um, the only other one I had written down was when Jim Carrey says, you know, he's bought some, bought some chips. Harry says, you know, we're on a pretty tight budget. He says, I sold some things. And then. He coughs Petey, and Jeff Daniels first double take. He goes, Petey? (laughs) 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 Bird? (laughs) A lot of good Uh, ones. A lot of good ones. Um, Good film. Another one I had, uh, again, at that that end scene when the the cops come in, uh, put your hands up, and Lloyd puts his hands up. Not you, dummy. (laughs) Not you, dummy. That would have been a good... That was a good non That would have That would have been my other non-pick. Either that or... Uh, the mobster guy. Who I don't even know if this line's supposed to be funny, but he just goes, "You don't kill people you don't know. It's a rule." <laughs> uh, the other mobster, how's he know I got gas? The yeah. whole setup for that's really good. Excuse me, Flo. <laughs> <laughs> Flo like the TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Harry's laugh there is real good. Uh, uh, Funny move. Harry, you're alive. You're a horrible shot. Yeah. <laughs> what if he shot you in the face is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the whole movie's just full of good lines. <laughs> nice uh, set of hooters you got there. That does get me every time. I know it's coming. His delivery on it is so good. Chat, we're back with you. Back with the chat. Um, it's okay, I'm a limo driver. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's you can you can literally read he, the script. Pretty much, Harlan Williams is the comedian who plays the cop. He used to host a bunch of that Comedy Central stand-up show. <laughs> Kick his ass, sea bass is not funny, but that is like a quote for it's the end of time. time like, yeah. That was such it a just popular. Get, it, Continues to be said if you have any friend named Sebastian or something. I think even if you don't know a Sebastian, if you just yell kick his ass, I think it's just rhymes. Two out of ten times, someone's gonna say Sebastian because it's just like in the lexicon. It was literally the last thing he said to us. Not if you count the gurgling sound. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's where that's where one one second you're eating a burger and (laughs) actually dead (laughs) meat. (laughs) That's that's where it's so tough. Because, man, I mentioned the the diner scene where they kill the guy with the burger or however you want to label that. When they start going with the ketchup and mustard and he passes it to him and he says, this helps. (laughs) Like, the the line itself isn't great, but them sharing mustard, mustard and ketchup as they kill a guy and then he sprays it up to catch it in his mouth. I'd have loved to see those scenes. 
Uncut. Life. Yeah. Uncut. There was one scene I was watching that wasn't that scene. Maybe it was. Um, where I was, I wonder when it was, because it was the beginning of the movie. I uh, had to get a lot of lines in there where I was just laughing at it, everything. Mm. I know I drafted a bunch from that scene where they're sitting around, but I don't think it was that. Um, when Seabass comes over to Harry and says, you going to eat that? And he goes, yeah, no, it crossed my mind. <laughs> that, that's pretty good. Um, I don't know, Lloyd, the French are assholes. That's a popular one. Let's go get a couple bowls of loudmouth soup was high on my <laughs> Harry board. Uh, that's just a funny phrasing and yeah. term. It's almost like too smart for the show. Like, that's a joke. These guys, like, aren't even saying jokes. Um, yeah. Who ordered the foot long didn't get taken? Which I do love. I, I do love. I mean, instant humor at the start of the show. Start of the movie. Second Lovely thought you accent might. you have there, New Jersey. Yeah. A couple early hitters. Second thought, you might want to run a comb through them. <laughs> it's covered in ketchup and mustard. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, something that interested me, and yeah. you know, you've heard me say this about the Friends, The Office, some other shows. How old do you think they each were when this movie came out? I thought about that. Because um, Jeff I Daniels looked looks older. I would guess he's like... 35, but it could be younger. I think Jim Carrey is probably 28, 29. 28 to 32 is what I'd guess for Jim Carrey. I I don't know how old they are now, which is part of the game. Yeah, it's a little tough for you. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm in that range. I'll give Jim Carrey 27, Jeff 30. So... In 94, the year it came out, so they probably filmed, like, the year before and stuff, but 94, when it came out, Jim Carrey was 32. Okay. And was Jeff, around it. Jeff Daniels was 39. Wow. And Dumb and Dumber. It's funny. I mean, he's a serious actor. He doesn't do comedy. Right. So this was, like, a very different role for him. Well, and that's the part, because, you know, I know... I know a lot of Jeff Daniels stuff now, but I wonder where he was in his career at that point. That's the part I don't, you know. Was he, like, taking a big chance? Was he, I don't know. <clears throat> I don't think either of them, because the Farley brothers were, were new as well. It was their second movie. Mm. Um, he did do Fly Away Home, but that was 96. No, dude, uh, he was in Speed, so he had a big year in 1994 as well. Yeah. I believe the story... Oh, there goes The Neighborhood. I like that movie in 92, but that's not a big one. So he was he was a working actor. That's what I'd... Yeah, I'd wonder... Um, I do remember that they got... I think they got Jim Carrey for super cheap. And right. then the mask had to pay or the opposite. Because this was like... 1994 was Jim Carrey's big year. The mask came out, Dumb and Dumber came out, and I think Ace Ventura came out all in 1994. I think that and Ace, the mask, I feel like the mask was later. No, mask was 94 too, wow. They're all 94, right? I think so, I guess so. Yeah. Wasn't a big mask guy. Me neither, it was too, wasn't into it. It was too much. But I also never fully like seen Ace Ventura either. I was raised on Ace Ventura. It's yeah. part of my growing up. That's good. Um, all right. Cool. So here's the trivia. According to the Farrelly brothers, Jeff Daniels wasn't wanted for the film, but Jim Carrey wanted him in it. In order to ensure a no from him, they offered Daniels 50 grand for the role. He accepted without any hesitation, nor did he attempt to negotiate. Despite insistence from his agent, the film would kill his career. But it's been his most successful. So how would Carrie have known Daniels? That's a good question. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is. I wonder if, like, is Jeff Daniels from... Is he Canadian? Is Jeff Daniels Canadian? No, he's from Athens, Georgia. I always land here. Interesting. All right, we got to figure out what movie we're doing next time. Next well, that was a month. good one. Next month... Next month, uh, are we, that draft, 
the Rise app. We're going to talk about the Rise app. I'm going to track my sleep. Okay. I'm going to see how I've been doing. Yeah, I haven't looked in a minute either. I'm trying to be better about my sleep. I go to sleep late, um, but I, st- I also haven't been getting any. This has been a bad week for work because they're painting and um, mm. painting and flooring my house and my office, so I can't work from home. And we've had busy days. But anyway, Rise, mm. <clears throat> the Rise app, risescience.com slash John Boy. Tracks your sleep. Sleep debt is important. Dude, I only have three and a half hours of sleep debt. That's the lowest I've seen in a long time. Yeah. Very excited about that. Very Hell yeah. Clever. What do you got? Very clever. Dude, I'm I'm great. I'm at, this is the lowest I've ever been. Are we having a good week? I'm at two and a half hours. Wow. I'm at 6'3", among the lowest I've That's been. That's low for you. Lowest when, lowest when we've ever done a check, I think. What time do you go to sleep? Um, so I think I got a little booster last night because I did fall asleep on the couch watching Dumb and Dumber. Um, last night it had me at 12.10. <coughs> hey, I went to sleep at 12.15 last night. Look at that. Is that, that's Jeez. a very early night for me these days. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's, um. Oh, that was asleep at oh, 11.55. No, did it, Friday. So it does your past week. Friday, I put up a ten and a half burger. You slept for ten and a half hours yeah. on Friday. What time did you fall asleep Thursday night? <laughs> it looks like ten forty-five. <laughs> so I just crushed it. Was there no game last Thursday? That was the Iowa game. It's Friday. Oh, Friday. No game. No game Friday. No game. That's why. How about that? Uh, I went to sleep at twelve fifteen, but that is my longest night of sleep. I woke up at nine. Wow. But I'm usually asleep at around 1 these days. Anyway, you can do all this stuff on the Rise app. It's pretty cool. It lets you know when you're groggy, when you're not groggy, uh, how to avoid grogginess, when you should be kind of going into a lull. My energy schedule right now, it says that I'm at 83%. It says I'm doing great. They don't know that I'm a little hot and warm in here, but mm-hmm. all of that. Um, so sleep debt uh, is the only score that matters according to Rise, and I agree with it. Rise tracks how much you sleep you owe your body relative to your own unique sleep. Rise helps you realize your potential with real results, real productivity, real performance, and real well-being. Go to risescience.com slash John Boy and download the Rise app today to try it for seven days. Free for seven days. Whether you want to become a morning person, be less exhausted during the day, or improve your productivity and daily energy, Rise is the power behind your next best day. Risescience.com slash John Boy. Try the Rise app for free for seven days. No match five today? Uh, I mean, we could play it if you want. Nothing's stopping us, but... They, uh, Where are we at? We're at, we're at just coming under up on two, two hours. hours. We got some other stuff that's going on. Um, do you want to, do you want to give going people on a road trip out of the roadie? <clears throat> yeah, road trip. Don't say this stuff we shouldn't that it's going to be a surprise for them, but obviously. Um, yeah, we're going to we're flying to Milwaukee, Chicago, uh, Chicago. Yeah, on Saturday, 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 and then, um, we're just using that as an airport for them. We're going to Milwaukee Saturday night. Uh, we'll be at the game Sunday. I think we're going to be running around maybe before the game at tailgate a little bit. Um, at the game in the first three innings, and then I think the last three innings are when we'd be able to like run around and, and say hi to everyone uh, if you're there and you want to say hi. And then we're doing some stuff with the Brewers. We might be doing some Tuesday, Brewsday interviews in person. Mm. Um, they're going to... They're hosting us. They're being very, very nice, the Brewers, and hosting us. So we're excited about that. Monday is an off day, and we are going to be recording Talking Baseball, I think, from um, American First, American Friendly American Family Field. American Family Field. We'll be recording Talking Baseball from there. Then Monday night, we're head down to Chicago. Tuesday, we'll be at the Cubs game. Ian Happ's Cubs. Watch our colleague. Yeah. That'll be nice. Then we get in the RV and we drive all the way to Pittsburgh. Biggest drive to go, day. To go uh, see the Pirates take on Jake Snakes. So if you're at that game, those those games, the Pirates, the Cubs game, the Pirates we're game, just floating. we're just floating. We're probably getting normal tickets like anyone else and just probably walking around and checking stuff seeing out. Seeing the stadium and trying foods Say that we should try and all that hi. shit. So if you have any suggestions at Wrigley or at uh, PNC, like special mm. items, let us know. 
And then the next day we're going to go to the Phillies game following Jake Snakes. They're going with them. Road trip. Road trip with the boys. Uh, so we're excited. We uh, no like crazy big event events. Like, come on, roll through, watch. It's <laughs> not or like anything. the single thing we're promo and it, it'll, you to come to. If that. you're at the stadium, come through, hang out with us. We're always open to that. Um, but yeah, a little uh, kind of end of summer roadie. So we uh, get ready for playoffs and stuff. So should be a good time. Me, Jim, BBD, Trevor will be in Milwaukee, and then he's leaving. Uh, Zach, joining. Zach, if you know uh, the Chris Rose rotation and producer extraordinaire Robbie Scirocco, uh he'll be there at the start, and then we trade him for Zach. So we'll uh, there will be some good content to come from that. That's it's a two for one you. trade in Chicago. Yeah, hell of a deal. All right, I'm gonna go drink some water, get some energy, and uh, we have a Let's bunch of other stuff to go do play today. Stuff. Mm-hmm. Got a busy day ahead of us. Go Yanks! Thanks, everyone. Tell everyone that Nicole is awesome, and comment all your favorite Dumb and Dumber quotes. That'd be a great comment section. Bye. <laughs> Two claps and we're out. Boy, Jake Radio, the only show. Yeah.